Hello everyone and welcome to another Plexus 2D tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to model a rigid circular footing. And I'll be basing this video on the tutorial made by Bentley. And you can find this tutorial uh, on the internet easily. So I'll be going through case A, rigid footing. And in the next video, I'll be discussing on the flexible footing. So now let's get on with this rigid footing modeling. So we've already started Plexus 2D here. And we can just name our file. So I'll just call this as a rigid circular footing. And now let's move on to the model tab over here. The first thing we need to change for sure is the model. It needs to be axis symmetry. Since we are modeling a circular footing instead of a plane. Then if we scroll down, we realize that X max and Y max are different from the values here. So we need to change X max to 5 meters and Y max into 4 meters. The constants and cloud services sections are not uh, touched at all in this tutorial here. So we can just click on OK. And now let us draw up our soil strata. So to do that, we just need to go to the borehole tool here. So left click on create borehole to create our soil strata. So it says that we must start at 0 0.00 over here as shown in step 2 of 1.2.2. So we'll start from here, and it says that the top must be 4 meters, and the bottom will be 0 meters. So click on add, and the top will be 4, bottom will be 0, and the hydrostatic head will be kept at 2 meters. Now we need to assign a soil material for our soil strata. So we just need to follow the data given here in this table. So I'll be showing you how to create a soil material in this video as well. So just click on materials here and click on new. And let's call this sand. And if you look here, the sand layer or the sand uh, material that we're going to use will be modeled using the more cool on method and it will be drained. So these two are already set correctly. Now the sand will have a unsaturated unit weight of 17 kilonewtons per cubic meter and a saturated unit weight of 20 kilonewton per cubic meter. So just type 17 and, and 20. And if you see here in this table, in the general section, there's nothing mentioned about the advanced option, so we can just leave these be. So next, we need to move to the parameters section. So we need to define our stiffness, as in terms of the Young's modulus. And we also need to define our Poisson's ratio, cohesion, friction angle, and dilatancy angle. So our effective Young's modulus here will be 13,000 kPa. And nu, which is our Poisson's ratio, or effective Poisson's ratio, it will be 0 0.3. And we do not need to fill in the shear modulus and the odometer modulus here. And the cohesion is 1 kPa. The friction angle phi is 30 and psi is just 0 degrees. And as uh, we look in this table here, you can see that in the parameters section as well, there's no mention of advanced settings, so we can just skip the advanced section here. And back to the tutorial, if you scroll down all the way down, you'll see that there's nothing much mentioned concerning the groundwater or thermal or interfaces or initial tabs, so we can just assume that whatever is set here will be the same as the settings in the tutorial. So you can just click on OK. 
click on OK and just assign the sand material here. So now let us define the structure for our footing in this example. So we'll be using the create prescribed displacement option. If you were to scroll down here. So we need to draw from 0, 0,4 to 1,4. So we just quickly draw it from 0, 0,4 to 1,4. Hit escape twice to exit the draw the drawing tool for this prescribed displacement. And it says in the selection explorer, set the x component of the prescribed displacement to fix. So we select this in the Selection Explorer, set the displacement at X, fix. And if you read down here a little bit, you'll see in step 8, we are told to specify a uniform prescribed displacement in the vertical direction by assigning a value of minus 0.05 to Y start ref, signifying a downward displacement of 0.05 meters. The Y start ref is at minus 1 meter now, but We'll change it to minus 0 0.05 and now we just need to go and generate the mesh for our model so to do this we can just click on this generate mesh button here and if you look at the tutorial you can see that we are using the medium element distribution so it's not needed for us to go and choose very coarse or very fine medium will do so just click on ok and you can see in the command line interface that the mesh has been generated already. If you ever see this in your command line interface, then you can move on to what, whatever tab you want to move on next. So we can skip the flow conditions as we can see in the tutorial here. You can just go to the stage construction. And in the stage construction, we are told to click on the Phase Explorer, or we can just click on this here. And you can see a brief definition of some of the options that you can use here. So like K0 is mentioned here, and you can read up on your own. So nothing much will be mentioned here. And now the most important part is to define phase 1. So phase 1, it is said that uh, we can just keep it as shown in this screenshot here. So right now we are using plastic calculation type and the loading type is stage construction. And the pore pressure is phreatic, so it's fine. So we can just click on OK. And select phase one and then toggle activation and then click on this rigid footing here. Then click select. Then we are already ready to proceed with the calculations for this example. Because if you scroll down, they don't mention anything about selecting curves. In fact, if you read somewhere here, it says ignore the warning that no node and stress points have been selected for curves. So it's fine because we're not plotting any curves here. So it's not needed for this in, for this example. So we'll just clock. So we'll just proceed with the calculations and ignore this feedback. And it should not take very long at all. It should probably finish within 30 seconds maybe. So now that our calculations are done already, we can just refer to the tutorial again and we can see that to view our calculation results, just click on this uh, calculate button with a magnifying glass. So we'll just click on this once, a pop-up will appear. And there we go. So the maximum displacement is 0 0.05 since we've already prescribed it. It should not exceed or it should not be less than 0 0.05. So to view the total displacements as mentioned 
in the notes, you can just click on deformations and under the total displacement section, you can find this U here. And now we can see the total displacements in shaded form. And you can see there are three types of uh, viewing options here. You have the contour line option or the arrow option. So if you look at the arrow option and then quickly go back to the shadings here, you realize that most of the arrows are concentrated where the zone is close to being red or orange. And that's about it for this uh, section on rigid circular footings. I do hope that you find this video useful. And if you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more videos on civil engineering softwares, please do consider subscribing. And as always, I hope that you're safe and keep learning. Bye.